Hello everyone, it's Laisel from Artist Palette and I am doing the Midnight Dock painting. So, this is a recording so you can watch this anytime. We are going to use, you can use any size canvas, you can use an 8x10, this is 8x10, you can do something bigger, 11 by 14 12 by 16 16 by 20 and so on. Really depends on what you want to use. And I have my primary colors as usual with black and white. Now the thing is you don't really need yellow and you can get away without using red. You only need these three colors really. But I'm going to show you some cool things you can do with some of the red and with the yellow as well if you're feeling a bit fancy. So overall um, if you have some sort of large flat, I know this doesn't seem very large, you can use something much bigger. I also like to use some medium, whoops, not that one, um, some medium flats, something a little bit smaller, and some sort of detailed brush, maybe something really thin, like a number zero, or a little bit of a bigger number four. Uh, for the shrubbery in the background that you see, just below the moon, that is a frayed brush technique and you can use your large if it's something a bit more frayed, kind of like this one. You can also get away with a round tip brush and do the similar type of thing. So you can use something a bit more rounded and just fray it and then dab with the tip of it. Lots of brushes you can use for that, even a sponge. All right, so let's get started. We are going to use our larger brush. Since I'm using a small canvas, this is technically more of a large brush. So I'm going to dip that in the water. And then um, to start, if you, like I said, the fancy thing, if you want to be a bit fancy with the colors and go a little bit above and beyond, what you can do is you can just, this is a mixing palette, is take a scoop of white. You want to start off a little bit lighter. Then we're just going to take a little bit of blue. Very little. See, it's a very light blue. And, you know, if you just need to go lighter, you just add a bit more white. And then you're going to take the tiniest dot of yellow if you want it to be more teal. Right? So you don't have to do just light blue. You can do like a tealish color. Um, remember, you only need very little yellow for that. Otherwise, it just turns very green. So you can add more blue and white if you need to drown it out whatever you prefer. There, it's like an aqua color, kind of fun. Sometimes I like to change things just for the sake of changing it. And here we go. So I just go right in the middle. Now, if you have a big canvas, you're going to do a lot more than this. I'm going to go down quite a ways. It's going to go up a little bit. So this is the sky and the water simultaneously. Just streak back and forth just like that and you can stop so you have a good section in the middle uh, I would say a good third of this and I'm going to wash this off okay wash that off dab it a bit dry because we want to do this while it's still wet so while it's still wet, I'm going to take my blue, straight blue. I'm going to go above. Okay, so I'm just going to go above this. Make sure you use up most of your paint at the top part here. Just like that. And same with down here. Just go below this color. Now that I'm running out of paint, I have very little left on my brush. Now I can just go back and forth lightly. See? Drag it up. Look at that. Nicely blended. Okay, so again, just use a touch of water if you find it's really dry. You can use the thin side of your brush too. I like to very lightly go along the edges. See, while it's still wet, it just blends really well. Go along the edges, just a little bit lower down to give it this more of a glow in the center. I'm going to go down a bit more. Okay, 
The more you go over this, the more it blends and the more it becomes more of a solid color. Okay. So you can always add more if you want to add a bit more. But that's nicely blended and you can go over it again with a second coat if you need to later. So I'm just washing this off. I like to do little touch-ups when that's dried a little. So here's where you can go much darker and indigo. If you want to use your mixing palette, take a big scoop of blue, a nice chunk of blue, and then take a good pea size of red compared. See, now it's deeper blue and it's more indigo. It's actually not purple. But if you add enough red, it will start turning purple. So it looks really, really dark. See that? Midnight blue. Perfect. I'm going to start at the very top. See? And just go back and forth. Take a scoop of that. And you can always add more red if you do like purple. So if you like it more purpley, just add a bit more red. So all I'm doing, going along the top here, back and forth, nice long streaks from end to end. And we're going to do the same on the bottom. And start dragging it up. Press lighter into blue. Just blends really well. And I'm just going a little bit on the edges. Give it a bit of a deeper look overall. So the key here is to, if you want it even deeper and more and less streaky looking, you can do a second coat. Your first coat is always more streaky. So that is an option. And what you usually do is you start from here and kind of work your way out again if you need to do that. Just washing this off. So I was showing you the teal for fun. You don't have to stick with it. You can just do a regular lighter blue. If you like it, go over it again. Yeah, I like to smooth things out. I'm gonna go up the middle a little bit more with this color. Just go over it, see back and forth. Lots of little streaks going over top. Smooths it out. Keep the edges a little bit darker and then use the same thing. I like to use the thin side of the brush more straight on and go over that again nice and streaky go down a little bit more down the middle start making it look a bit watery just a little bit down the middle and I like the streaks because that movement is great in water. Now, just wait a minute, wash that off. Now I'll do a second coat along the tops here. Or, yeah, second coat up here more. So I'm just going to wave this around for a second. You know, take a step back, make sure you have a nice contrast from light to dark. A little drier would have been awesome, <laughs> but you know, this is what we got. Okay, so deeper color up at the very top. You can even add a touch of black if you want to do that. Make sure there's no white. Big scoop of blue, a little bit of, a little less of a red, but you could almost get away with equal parts. Once you do a second coat up here, it looks even darker. Notice how it looks a lot darker now. Yeah, 
and I'm just very lightly going down a bit. along the edges a little bit more and I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom just use the thin side for the most part you can always switch brushes I like to come back to the water and add a bit more streaks too. Um, to smooth things out, it's great to just take a bit of your light blue, just kind of in between. You can also use just a straight dark blue, um, but yeah, you can go over the sides, just kind of in between that lighter to darker area. All about preference. Okay, you can just go back to your dark purpley blue color. It is very blue, much more indigo looking. This is just straight blue. Should you just want more of a pure blue? And I just like to I just like to smooth things out. Even though it still has some darkness, I like to just get a little bit of the edges. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do one more coat in the water. It's a bit more opaque, more solid. Use the thin side. You can go back to teal if you like teal. I was just using more of a blue for the sake of keeping it consistent, but I just showed you in the beginning the teal color um, for in case you're interested in that, in case you wanted to do teal. All right, now I wash this off again. Once you feel like you have a good coat going on here, it's very glary because it's wet. You want it to mostly dry, but first I, I just flick some stars and um, you can also dot in some stars. Even though it's wet, it's okay because it's not going to, as long as it's flat, you want your canvas to be flat for it. All right. I'm just going to tone down the light while it's still wet. There, yeah, you can see it. Um, it's a little bit darker than it looked before because there's a lot of light on it before. Now it's a little bit more tame. I'm going to use you can use a smaller brush. You can also use just a round, some sort of medium brush. I'm going to dip that, fully submerge it a couple times in the water, let it drip, and pick up a dot of your yellow, or sorry, no, white. Okay. Coat it, make sure it's watery. Dip it in the water again, move the paint around, make sure it's very, very watery. And this is how you can get your stars. See, you pull it back, flick. So you can do a lot, you can just do a little bit. And from here, I take my number zero. I take white, so you just want to take a small touch of water, put it in here, kind of curl your brush, just turn it around, just like twist, twist, twist to keep it thin on the end. And just pick and choose certain stars you want. Just existing stars is great to kind of go up, down, side, side. 
Now at the end is probably best because it's I got blue that's still wet. Up, down, side, side. Okay. Let's do another one here. Down, side, side. And if you're looking to do a shooting star, maybe I'm gonna do it at the end. I'll show you how to do a shooting star later if that's something you want to add in. All right. So my next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my frayed round or anything frayed brush. A flat is good using just the tip, the a round for the tip, anything like that. I'm wiping off a lot of the water so that's a bit more dry because that's what it's kind of what we want. I'm going to use both brushes so you can see how it's looking and see what you prefer. Let's start with this one. We're just going to take a little bit of black. See, nicely coated. We don't need a big chunk of it. Just dab, dab, dab with the tip of it. Now we're going to go straight across the horizon first of all. Okay, straight across here. It's okay if it's a bit thicker. Grab, dab, 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 pick it up. And this is what I'm doing. Use up most of it at the bottom. Most of it's at the bottom. All right. And then wipe off extra paint. Lightly tap with the tip, a little bit more sparse as you go upwards. More on the sides here. Just dab, dab, dab. Lightly press too, you can get more of a spongier look. You can deepen it with more black later on at the bottoms. Slight little touches at the tops. So that's my first coat. I'm gonna put another bit of black later on and also some green, some like dark green. If you want to go above and beyond and add a little bit of a green highlight along the tips of it. Um, the other brush that I have here, this one, you just use more of the, the tip here and you can just get more, see those angled, angular kind of spiky lines if you like that look. Just like that. All right, so I'm gonna leave that for now. I'm gonna add more later. Wash it off. This time I'm gonna to switch to my more medium flat. So butter, medium flat. We're gonna to touch up the water put in a bit more of a streaky look. So I'm going to use more of my indigo blue. That was the blue with some red. See? Flatten it with some water. So you're just flattening it down and just streak. You come from the sides, longer ones towards the bottom, some shorter ones from the sides, longer ones. And then wash this off. You can do highlights with teal. You can do highlights with your light blue. Both if you have both colors. So I just take the same light blue I put in my sky. Add some streaks in here. Just do some overlapping. You can hide and tone down some really dark blue spots as well. Okay, so I actually add the white after I do the black in the water, but you can get a little base going. So that's just the same flat brush, wash it off and take pure white 
flatten it again. I like to go right up here and it's kind of, if it's still wet, it's not going to be as white, but your first coat is, is fine. You just go back and forth, back, 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 forth, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, right? A little bit shorter at the bottom. Very imperfect. I think it's key because it makes it look like it's moving a bit more. So that's kind of like the, just where to start, you know, and then you can later touch up onto it, especially when we do our moon in just a minute. So, see okay. how yeah, it's looking so far? It's getting there. Letting this black sit for a minute before I add a bit more deepness and some greenery, just a bit more of a green color. Okay, so for the moon, here's a fun tip. Um, a size four is good. You can use your zero. I use a four or a two um, by taking water on my brush, just a little bit of water, just like you how you did the stars, just watery white not drippy too much, just watery white, very little white. Don't take too much white whatsoever, very little. So in here, this seems like a good spot. All I'm doing is spiraling it out from a little dot in the center, just like this. Yeah, touch more white just to keep it going. And this is gonna be the glow around my moon. When this is dry, I'm going to put a white circle within it, and you can see the light glow around it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. So you gotta let that rest. I'm just gonna touch up onto the, put a little white dot in the middle of your stars. Or if you're saving it for the end, great. You can give it more of a shine. Another thing you can do is give, give it a little X on some of them. You make it look a bit more shiny. Not exactly shiny, but bright. And if you, anything you don't like, you just go back over it with some of your dark blue. Easy to fix. And splatter some stars again. And some more streaks. If you want to add more streaks in, you can use your detailed brush. I would say a number two or four is great. A zero doesn't really do a whole lot. black in the bottom here. Now in terms of brushes, I think a flat, thin one is good. So if I, the medium flat one, it's kind of small on this one, but the canvas is also small. What you're doing is you're just going below. So we have this line. I'm just going very little, looking it down like this, as if it's upside down grass. Then what I'm doing is I'm going to use the thin side and just extend it a bit. So as it gets taller, I'm going to extend it further down. Now there's other ways you can just reflect this into the water. You can just do the same technique you did up here, but in there. That's an option. Or do it the easy way and just flick it down. So I'm going right up to this line. You don't see the line anymore. We're going to make it more visible when we do the white highlights in the water. See, streak it down, use the thin side. It gets taller here, so I'm going to go taller or longer.
key and basically nothing in the middle. So what I want to do is just touch up on my black. Don't use water with your black. Let it be more dry because it will stick better and be more solid. So down here, you want to keep it consistent. Nice layer of black down here. Dab along the bottoms. go upwards or leave it the same height if you went really tall don't go any higher okay, washing this off I want to show you some green highlights after we do the grass and the dock at the bottom. I'm going to put green highlights just along the top. Okay, so number, I'm going to use my number four brush, that's fine. You can also just use a medium flat. Any round one is fine too. I'm going to use the same one here. Okay, so this dock Notice how it's not going all the way up here. We need a nice little gap. So we're gonna go a little bit more towards the bottom of the reflection that we have started, kind of center with the moon. Okay, so short line. Short line. Then I'm going to go wider out on an angle. See? Just a slight angle, nothing crazy. Just make sure that it is going wider and then fill it in side to side. Even if you have to use a medium brush, that's fine. I just like to fill in the sides, go side to side. You want them going straight all the way down. Okay, and then from here, adjust to your liking. You can go a bit wider, that's easy to do. And I add a touch of water to my black paint, so I pick up a little bit more. So this is kind of important. Um, at the end, just on the very corners, I do a short stick, so just lightly press straight down. They're, you know, they're not a thin, thin line. They're pretty decent in size. Okay. Then in the middle-ish area, see how we have that angle? Right from this side, I'm gonna go straight up. Just press and just imagine you're going straight going right into the black. See, that's pretty close. Those are the posts going into the water. You'll notice that if you go out, they look wonky. So again, other side, straight up. And the very bottom, I do one more. I'm gonna just press a bit harder because they're closer to you so they appear bigger. Just off to the side here, straight up. And from here I use water and black paint on the same brush. You can use a number zero, double zero. I'm just doing some grass. I'm just flicking it up, 
like some reeds, tall grass, um, bulrushes, cattails. Just get a lot going on from the bottom. Don't do 10 or five and say that's it. You just wanna really fill it in at the bottom. Just do lots of little short streaks like that. And it looks like you have some sort of wild grass going on, not just what I call a pathetic amount. There, so let's do the other side. A little bit of water. And just do some in different directions. You have to keep adding paint and water. Flick it upwards, some taller towards the side, sure. Lots of little ones flicking from the bottom. Okay. There. Now the trick for making these bulrushes. There's a couple brushes you can use. You can use um, the round one I just showed you, something a little bit bigger. Um, you can use this flat one. Let's use both. So I'm gonna take my flat medium. I'm gonna use it more on the side or straight on. I like the side. I'm gonna go on the end of one. So I'm gonna find an end of one. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave a little tail at the tip of it and just press, pull it down a little there. Here it is closer. See, there's that little tip on the end. So we have, you just press, it's like a, an oval shape, and you got that little tail right on the end here, thin line from the grass that you made. There. You can also use more of a round brush that's not when you press down you're happy with the width of it if it's too wide maybe not but maybe use a detail brush See, the same type of thing you go on the ends you have like a little grass piece here and then you're going to leave a little gap from the top you're just going to press with the full width of it pull it down just a little and you have the same thing Okay, so press, don't press too hard if it's really wide, or just use your thin flat brush. I'm going to do some towards the bottom, like as if there's some shorter ones that you see down here. Um, I'm going to highlight them so you can see what I mean. I'm just going to add a couple more pieces of grass. And let's add one more up here. Ooh, just press, pull it down, leave that little tail on the end. Now I just let that sit for one minute. I'm going to highlight the grass with some more light gray and um, in the meantime in the dock I'm going to highlight as well. I'm going to take white on my number zero or two or four. This is my number four. I'm going to go right in the middle here. I'm going to go pretty close to the edge. the size of a dime. Um, if you're on a bigger canvas maybe do like a quarter. I'm gonna go a tiny bit bigger. Yeah let's go a bit bigger. It 
So your first coat is not going to be the best because it is streaky and it's picking up some blue even though it's dry. It just it's more transparent that way. You just have to go over it again. Just be careful. The more you keep going over it, the bigger it gets. As mine gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. So what I do is I gather the extra paint, kind of just pick it up, smooth it out, wash this off. Dry it really well. Dry that really well so that when you touch it, it's not really wet. You can just go around the edges to make it fade again. You just don't want to pick up too much paint. If you have a, like a clump of it, just wipe it up, wash it off so that it's really thin, thin coat and just go around the edges soften it one last time and then when I do my last coat of white it should be very white right in the center sometimes it takes a couple times but that's okay okay so water and some white on my detailed brush all I want to do here is just highlight some of my grass. Now you can go light gray. If your black is still a bit wet, perfect, just do white. If it's kind of mostly dry, do a light gray. See how white that is? That's a big no for me. I'm going to take black and just lightly go over it. You know, it looks like a bit of a grayish tone. So I'm just taking some black and a little bit of white. Get a medium to light gray. That is nice. And then you just go over, get some highlights. It's like more of a medium gray, nothing too bright. It's distracting. I like to highlight just a little bit on the tips and the sides of my bulrushes here. Okay. A little bit on the side. I like to go the moons down the center, so the sides that are hitting the light from the center. So this side, more on the right. On this side, the left and the top. Okay, and just tame it with some black. Should you need to do that. It's just a couple more pieces of grass just for the sake of it. Here. So use that same medium gray touch of water. You can use the, the detail brush or you can use your medium flat whatever works best. You can use the thin side. Both is good. Both works great. Probably the flat one is more steady. So what I do is I just lightly streak along the top and just work my way down. Just like that, side to side. Um, and then go over it with some black. So you don't even have to wash off the brush. You can just go along the bottom first and work your way up. So it looks like it's fading. So it goes lighter towards the top, darker at the bottom. Make sure they're all straight lines.
and you can use your medium to darker gray, nothing too bright, to just give a little highlight along the top half here, along the side. I think that's a nice little addition. And also use your medium gray to highlight the top. Feel free to go lighter if you want it to be a bit more obvious. So the line at the top, go down on this side, the left at the top, on the right. Okay, top here, down on the left. Just went a little bit thicker, that's okay. Top, left, top, right, top, right. And if I made a thicker line, black, cover it. See that? Yes. There we go. Now we have some sort of dock. Looks like it has a bit more depth. Uh, something fun to add is you can use the back handle, like dip it, like the round back handle dipped in the white to do stars. You can poke to do stars, make some slightly bigger ones because I think it looks a bit more realistic that way. Some are shining brighter, some are closer, further, bigger, smaller planets type of thing. And if you want to do a shooting star, you just need a little dot. Start with a dot somewhere. Um, let's just put one right here. Dot. Press here. Flick it. Press. Flick. You're going to pull away as you flick. You can also add in stars, little dots into the water to make it look like it's reflecting also into the water. Take a little dot here. And you just poke very lightly. Kind of looks like fireflies too if you want it to. You poke it into the grass. I'm going to take my white, make a nice circle within my glowing circle. Got more of a glow on the outside. I'm just going to add a couple little dots down here. All right, let's put in some green up at the top if you want to. You don't have to, you can skip over it. I like to take a little piece size of blue. Um, I touched my teal, but that's okay. And equal parts of blue and yellow with a touch more yellow. And um, a couple dots of black. Okay. If you add in a small touch of white, you can see the color more. You can just leave it really dark. There we go. Muddied green. 
So I'm gonna wipe off a lot of this paint. I'm just gonna dab. Make sure it gets frayed at the tip of it. And just go along the very top. So you can go, if you want more of a highlight, just add a bit more white. So if I add a touch more white, see it gives it more of a lighter look. I kinda like it dark actually. Let me go back to my dark one. And just go along the tops. Don't go higher, you just go over the towards the top of the black. All of that area. And then you can take your black, don't go into the water, just leave it above the water and dab it from the bottom upwards. You don't need to cover the black. deep color with a little bit of green highlight at the top. Okay. And feel free to add in some of that into the grass down here. This is just black, don't worry, but you can if you want to put some of that in. All right, now my medium flat. I'm going to use white. If you want to change your water, you can. We're going to go along our horizon. So flatten your brush as you pick up the paint. Flat, flat. Okay. You're just gonna go pretty wide, right below where your um, shrubbery starts. Make sure this is dry. You can get a blow dryer if you want it to go faster. As soon as you touch black, not good. So right down the middle, still a bit wet. Right down the middle, we're just going to go over that again. Thinner, some, some longer and wider, thinner. But let that layer underneath be kind of like um, a softer highlight. Okay, and I'm starting to streak over top of my black, which is what you want to do. So it's more bright down the middle. Take my white again. And I'm just going to go out a little bit more. You just extend some. And I'm just extending a couple, going into the reflection of the black. You can do some extras on the side here. Looks really glossy.
So whenever you feel like you're done, this is, I'm going to show you a bit of my detailed brush if you prefer to use that one, because it's not like you have to use a medium flat. You can do the same type of thing. I'm just going over some, because mine wasn't fully dry, but I highly recommend you do not do what I do. going down the middle a little bit more brighter down the very top part so that's where most of the highlight and reflection is beaming off on the water and a little bit less lower down extra see just along the top have black just in case I need to take away from things. It's always a possibility. Mostly along the horizon, not too much everywhere else. You can soften the edges, those edge white lines, so it looks like it's fading. Brighter into the center and then more black towards the edges. And this is just my detailed brush to do any little touch-ups. But yeah, that should be pretty much it for the most part. If you haven't done your stars, add your stars. You can add light little dots and touches with your detailed brush, very little paint to get more of a fluffier look along the ends, more of a spongy kind of look. Yeah, you can sign your painting whenever you feel like you're done. So there we go. The midnight dock, lots of stars. I like to do the splatter, some people like to just do the dots and take that step back, see how it's looking. Hopefully this was fun and relaxing, not too difficult. Love to see results. You can go on our Facebook page and post your results on our event page uh, under events where we put the event itself or you can go to our groups and put it under artist palette support group for drawing and acrylic paintings. Thank you guys. Check out artistpalette.com, artistpalettedurham.com and see anything coming up that's free, that's on Zoom, also on Facebook, we post there too. All right. Thank you. Bye.